Open world games aren't getting any smaller and GTA 6 is gonna take that even further. And it's great to have all this room for activities, but I'm starting to think that these open world games are getting a little too big. But there are some open world games that do a really good job of using the space that their game is set in, not just a big explorable map with missions on it. Days Gone is set in the post-apocalyptic version of Oregon. The whole game is dirt roads and forests and little towns in between. To traverse this open world landscape filled with zombies, you've got a motorcycle. At first, this just seems like a gearhead's dream come true. It's a motorcycle that's strong enough to brave the zombie apocalypse. But as players trudge through the wilderness, it becomes very clear that there's a lot more riding on this bike than just a disgruntled bounty hunter. For starters, you've gotta make sure the bike doesn't get too damaged, so you need to be collecting scrap along the way so that if it does get damaged, you can repair. Scrap is also used to upgrade the bike to make it more resilient and to make it go farther distances with a bigger gas tank, which is the other big thing that you'll be doing in this game, stopping for gas. And while that might sound annoying at first, why would you want to have to get gas for a video game vehicle? It's actually a really clever way to not only break up exploration, but give players a reason to explore the area. And having to maintain the bike actually changes the pacing of the game for the better. You'll wind up focusing on more side quests, getting more upgrades, finding more weapons, and getting into a lot of trouble. Days Gone does have a fast travel system, but it also incorporates the motorcycle. You can only fast travel as far as your bike would be able to take you if you were to ride it there. So upgrading the bike's gas tank not only gives you the ability to ride farther, but it also makes fast travel work better. I can't think of a lot of games that actually give you the ability to upgrade your fast travel outside of unlocking new fast travel points. I thought this was really clever. So between maintenance and gas in your bike and making sure that you can use fast travel effectively, Days Gone marries you to this motorcycle and makes it a big part of the game that you just cannot ignore. And the open world of Days Gone really complements the motorcycle in a lot of ways. You don't want to get caught running between locations because zombies are just going to take you out and overwhelm you. Metal Gear Solid The Phantom Pain introduced open world traversal to the Metal Gear series. The main focus and purpose of the open world in The Phantom Pain is to empower player creativity. This gives us the ability to track enemy movement, decide when the best time is to attack, and figure out what the best plan of attack is based on the current situations and your current loadout. And to take things a step further, the game's got a weather system that changes whenever it wants to. You'll be in the middle of a mission and suddenly it'll start raining, which could be to your benefit or not. Now enemies are gonna have a harder time hearing you, but you're also gonna have a harder time hearing them and your visibility is gonna be limited, but so is theirs. And as you unlock more gear for your buddies as well as yourself, you'll find yourself playing old missions over again to try to get a better score. So you can look at older missions in a new light and again, do all this creative thinking to see how can I best handle this scenario and how can I make this really fun for myself. The enemies in the Phantom Pain aren't that stupid either. So they're able to respond to what you do and they start getting smart to your tricks. For example, if you start getting a lot of headshots on a lot of troops, a lot more troops are gonna be wearing helmets moving forward. So the game's responding to your actions constantly and it's also throwing a lot of things at you all the time. <laughs> At this point, I think it's safe to say that Tears of the Kingdom surprised everybody with how much they added to what was already a huge game in Breath of the Wild. Before this game came out, we were all very ready to be on the original Hyrule overworld as well as this new Sky Temple setup. Nobody thought for a second that there was another world underneath the overworld that we'd be getting because Nintendo didn't tell us. The depths were not present in any of the trailers because it was a surprise. All of Link's new abilities not only recontextualized the way the overworld worked, but they also give you a reason to play in these two new areas. Sure, you can make a car and drive around and do all that, but what kind of flying machine can you make? Can you use a flying machine to get really, really high up like I did to find a King Gliok? Yes. Will you regret doing that? Also yes. But these are the kinds of scenarios that get created by the way the open world works in tandem with the building mechanics. The sky map, the overworld, and the depths all exist for you to have fun in them, but they also mean a lot to the game's story. I'm not gonna talk about any of those spoilers, but I think it's really cool that they were able to bring these three worlds together that couldn't be any more different. The connective tissue being the player because you'll seamlessly go from the sky areas all the way down to the depths without even thinking about it. The open world in Tears of the Kingdom makes us think in all of the directions and the game is actually better for it. When describing it, it sounds like it should be overwhelming, but with all the things that Link can now do, it just makes sense.
Sleeping Dogs takes place in Hong Kong. The open world is just as important of a character as the main character is to the game. But with the way Hong Kong frames everything and the things you do, both for the missions as well as side quests, really add to the whole flavor of the game. Traveling between locations feels busy. It feels like you have to be careful and if you're not, you're gonna have an accident and the cops are gonna start chasing you and you just sort of have to act responsibly in the city that you're in. And when you go shopping for clothes or items or food, it feels like you're in a market. It's very busy, there's people everywhere, they're yelling at you saying, come over and buy my stuff. And overall, the entire city looks very lived in, which makes it look like a real place. Because without all these details, it would just feel like a game that wants to be Grand Theft Auto when Sleeping Dogs is very much its own thing. Before we start talking about Elden Ring, it's worth noting that I picked this game back up for the footage for this video and I wound up beating it. Obviously, I'm not gonna use any of that footage for the video, but I just wanted to celebrate that for myself and with you, I, I did it. I beat Elden Ring, oh my gosh. Just in time for the DLC to make me question more of my life choices. Anyway, Elden Ring's open world exists for one reason, and that is to make the player feel very, very small. There's bosses that I'm sure I haven't even fought. There's areas that I've probably never even explored, but I had an experience that was my experience through this gigantic world. Everything that you see in Elden Ring, you can go and check out. And you may very well regret going to those places because some of the bosses in this game are ridiculous. If you're at all familiar with Dark Souls and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, you know that From Software likes to make a hard video game and Elden Ring is no different. But the open world exists to tell you, hey, find something and you can probably kill that boss. This also comes with the caveat that you might find something that's really useless to you after fighting a boss that was really difficult. But there's so much to find and do in Elden Ring that you're bound to find things that work for you, you just gotta go out there and get them. But the epic scale is the focus here and that is why the open world in Elden Ring works and it's also beautiful and well crafted. All of this is to say that an open world game can do a lot more than just give you a big space to explore. And the way open world games contextualize their gameplay and their stories with their open world is something that can be really special. So if there's an open world game that came to mind when I was talking about these games, let me know in the comments. It's kind of great when you guys share what games you like in the comments because not only does that help somebody else who's watching the video, but it also gives me something to look for as well. This is the first video of 2024. We did it, we made it, we finally got a video out. I actually had the idea for this video at the end of last year, but then the holidays happened and then I got sick which was really great. I loved that. I lost a whole week to that. It wasn't pleasant, but that is also when I beat Elden Ring. So, you know, being sick has its small benefits sometimes. Thank you very much for watching the first video of 2024. We got more streams coming. We got more videos, more shorts, all the things. I'm just really excited to keep doing this stuff. It really does mean a lot to me that you guys watch my videos. So if you made it this far, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next one.